Hello from the San Diego County Bar Association in sunny San Diego. I'm Adriana Linares. Hi, I'm Jeff Joseph, a, a county bar member. And we're on the road with Legal Talk Network. This is exciting, huh, Jeff? Yes. We're going to record a little podcast talking about San Diego County Bar. I'm the new member technology officer. I'm new around here. And we decided to do a couple of on the roads to showcase the technology initiatives that the bar here has taken on. And um, we thought you'd be a great guest to help members of the bar and others understand and hear why the decisions were made. You've been a member of this bar for a long time. You've been very active in the bar and in the community. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I actually started in the attorney general's office typing appellate briefs. Oh my gosh. So that's pretty old school. So every time some advancement in technology came along, uh, I wanted to find out what it is. I adopted it. We actually used to have Word Perfect for DOS, a sure. little blue screen. Oh, gosh. Uh, and I would always tell uh, the lawyers in my office, you know, if you went to a doctor and you had to have knee surgery, would you want a doctor that said, oh, we've got this new arthroscopic technique? Or would you want a doctor that said, nah, I got this old Bowie knife, you know? <laughs> that'll work. You'd want the doctor that was up on the latest technology. And so I always thought, Let's find out what it is and try and use it. And frankly, it's it's turned out to be very productive. I wonder what what how did you get that in you that desire to be so such a cutting edge early adopter in technology because it's definitely not the way most lawyers are. Well, a part of it was my dad who was uh, a television writer of all things, but was very much into technology, ham radio operator. But the other part of it was I say just typing, uh, and then we went to dictating machines. You know, and each thing that we went to was easier than what we had before. So if something came out that would make things even more easy, I had a look at it. And we didn't adopt everything, but um, I found that the things that, that we use now and that we've used before were better than what we had before. So in moving that attitude and that approach toward your membership at the bar and your activity and uh, activism, I should say, in the bar... Um, how did technology come about in your meetings and discussions with bar leadership about why technology should be something that, that the bar pushes? I think there was sort of a collective decision among, I was a member of the board, county bar board. There uh-huh. was a collective decision that we were getting a lot of new lawyers, millennials. This is what they expect. This is what they're looking for. So uh, we went to the website. And then after I was off the board, I believe, then they started with an app. Uh, and so they, they were on board pretty quickly because they knew that's where the demand was. And, you know, if, if they didn't move along, a lot of lawyers would just say, well, they're not up on the times. That's great. No, I love it. And, and the fact that they hired a member technology officer, yours truly, I think is, it shows part of that initiative and that desire to, to service the community and, um, really help push technology as an important piece of practicing law, which you are a mediator now. Yes. But you've had a lot of roles. You said you were the dean of, or the... Well, yeah, I, I was in the attorney general's office. Uh-huh. Uh, then I was a trial lawyer with Caltrans, became the head of the San Diego office, supervising 17 lawyers. And then uh, when I retired, I became associate dean of Thomas Jefferson Law School for six years. Uh, and when I got my Medicare card and I was teaching 25 <laughs> year olds, I thought I shouldn't be doing this anymore. <laughs> so I became a mediator and I enjoy it, but, uh, you know, I, I try and vary my activities now cause I'm kind of getting up there in years. But you have not lessened your interest in technology because you came in here with your Apple Watch, you've got Excel spreadsheets, you've got an iPad. We're talking about how important technology is to you today. It is. Tell me more. Yeah. Well, the other thing is uh, last year I decided there, there has to be something other than just practicing law. So I started volunteering at one of the local hospitals and they use technology. And so I saw when I was telling you about the orthopedist, I, I see how important it is, robotic surgeries and uh, all kinds of advanced imaging. So it's it's not just the law, as you know. Yeah. And I find it, I just find it interesting to see how society is moving along in all kinds of different professions. You know, and you mentioned to me how much you use Excel. Yes. Which 
um, it's such a funny thing. As much time as I spend it with lawyers and, and teaching lawyers and their staff how to use technology, Excel is one of those things that often a lawyer will say to me, what would I use Excel for? And I mean, I just want to bang my head against the wall at the at that question. So tell us a little bit, what would a lawyer use Excel for? <laughs> you know, it's a great thing when you have a lot of data to be able to organize it and put it in one place. And And I was showing you uh, a case that I had mediated, and obviously I, I, I got rid of identifying information yes. because mediation is confidential. But the lawyers, as lawyers want to do, were writing in text. And they had this number and that number and this date and that date. And I was getting confused. I had two different lawyers. So I put it all in Excel. And the nice thing about Excel is you can sort. Yes. So if they were giving me all kinds of different dates, I could enter them in any order and just hit sort. And I got them all in chronological order. When we moved the County Bar Association from 7th and A down here, we had a lot of data to determine would it be uh, better financially to stay up there and make the improvements or come down here. And we put a lot of work into it, uh, Ellen and Karen, and we had all kinds of different tabs, but it was all there. The other thing that it's useful for is making graphs. And some right. people, I've learned from teaching law school, some people are visual learners. So if you can show them something in visual form, they tend to remember that better than text. And speaking of visual enhancements to, to both teaching and maybe demonstrating evidence, you had mentioned to me earlier that when you were at the law school, you taught everyone how to use um, trial director. I did. And so you were one of those ahead of the curve professors, which by the way, is your nickname... Projo. Projo. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for Professor Joe, I take it. Professor so, Joseph. So Professor Joseph, short, shortened to Projo. I love that. So in your Projo days, yeah. you said these students need to know how to use technology and you started with trial director. Well, I'll tell you what's interesting about that. We actually started it when I was running the Caltrans office. We use it in trial. And I remember when we first started using it, uh, one of my friends, Superior Court Judge, she's now the presiding judge of the Court of Appeal, uh, Justice McConnell, said, you know, I'm not sure that's really a good idea because the jury might think, oh, well, you're the state and you've got all this fancy schmancy technology and here's this, you know, plaintiff and he's using an Elmo, you know, which really looks cheesy. Um, <laughs> yes, but that you know, should go down in the, down in the books. An uh, Elmo looks cheesy. It does. <laughs> but within five years... A lot of people are using it because the jurors use technology in their life. They, now they expect to see it. It's true. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And you also mentioned to me a couple of apps that you use on your iPad really readily. And what are those? Well, the one that we used to use for grading papers, I didn't, uh, but some of the TAs, is a program called iAnnotate. So what you can do is you take any PDF document and Adobe has a similar program. Oh, you there's can, tons, yeah. Yeah, you can mark it up, you can highlight it, whatever, and then you can save it. And so I can either save it locally on my iPad or I can save it to the Judicate West website. And I haven't looked at paper in five years unless you, somebody gives it to you. Unless me. somebody forces it on yeah. you. And um, so do you? is it safe to say that you carry your office around in your briefcase? I do. What other tools or apps do you use that help you stay mobile and connected and, and pretty busy? Do you have your iPad on um, broadband so it's always connected um, or you just hook onto Wi-Fi? I hook onto Wi-Fi. I, yep. I really, you know, I can use my personal hotspot oh, on my iPhone sure, if, you if need I it. need to do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would say uh, in relation to legal, it's probably I annotate more than anything else. If I were a practicing lawyer, which I'm not anymore... I would definitely consider Depot Pad. Oh, sure. And Trial Pad. Trial there pad. used to be a program, I got to remember the name of it, Live Note. That was the first right. of the deposition summary programs. And it was awesome because, once again, you could highlight, you could sort because it's OCR, you could do word searches. Yes. So that was kind of the first generation of that. And now with Trial Pad and Depot Pad, the practice of law has just gotten so much easier. Do you meet a lot of lawyers today that are still afraid of technology, against technology, or just say, well, I'm a dinosaur, I, you know, or I've got somebody to do that for me? What do you say? Absolutely. No, yeah. they're, I mean, frankly, a lot of lawyers, a lot of, a lot of my colleagues, you know, they're a little stodgy. That's the way lawyers tend to be. Yeah. And so, you know, they say, well, your paper was good enough for me in the old days. And I see people walking out of Judicate West with these giant briefcases like Willie <laughs> Loman in Death of a Salesman. <laughs> And I'm thinking, why are you doing this? 
why do you make it so hard on yourself? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really, if you would just take the time to figure out how to use technology, life could be so much easier. Well, that's the thing is that, you know, it's, it's, you front load uh, the time into it to learn the programs, but it pays off. And again, if you thought about a doctor, you wouldn't even think twice about using a doctor that wasn't up on the latest technology. Why isn't it the same in the law? It's true. It's true. Well, it's lawyers like you that inspire the rest of the lawyers to get on with technology and not be afraid and use it wisely and, and um, serve their clients better. People generally, you know, they, they come to it later. I remember when I, I think I was one of the first to get an iPhone when people were using Blackberries uh -huh. and it was hard to get them off their Blackberries. You know, now everybody's got an Android or an iPhone. They don't think anything of it. It's really amazing how quickly a habit will change when it does make your life easier. Yes. But also there's, you know, as I say, I'm an early adopter. You know, once it be, people perceive it as being mainstream, usually people get on board. I agree. Yeah. And especially when it's convenient, right? If the technology works and it's convenient is when I see a lot of the adoption just kind of. Yeah. And it's, you know, as you know, it's not just true of the law. It's true of everybody. But I remember when I was over at Thomas Jefferson, our IT guy telling me there's this new thing coming called the cloud. <laughs> the cloud? What is that? You know, and that's what now allows people to be able to sit in Hawaii, yeah. and, you know, and work on anything that they want. Now we think nothing of that. No. Or artificial intelligence. You know, every time you Google something in and then it gives you the answer, there that's artificial is. intelligence. That good old AI. Yeah. I don't Although know why Although AI all... can be a challenge for even lawyers. There's now an AI program that will read contracts. Oh, and sure. Yeah, because it the, the program knows what it's looking for. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, not if you're a contract reviewer. Right. Then it's pretty scary at that yeah. point. But then, you, you know, you adapt to working with those programs. And I think that's what we want to encourage all lawyers to do is just study some of the technology that's available. Don't be afraid of it. It's not all going to work for you. Yeah. But um, it's one of the things that the bar is definitely doing as part of its initiatives, not only in hiring me as a <clears throat> member technology officer, but with the webinars and seminars that we're doing. We actually did one this month on TrialPad, which you mentioned, um, and we just did Excel on Tuesday. Perfect. I know. That's so great. It's been really fun. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming in and talking to us. It's been my pleasure. Where can listeners find, friend, or follow you when it comes to the internet or a website or your email? Well, I am a mediator at Judicate West, uh, and Judicate West is all over California. So I'm in San Diego. I'm in Orange County. I'm in L.A. But all you need to do, you can email me at jjoseph at judicatewest.com, or you can go to the website, Judicate West, and there's picture and profile and more than you'd want to know. Jeff, you don't sound very retired to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I try and, and have like a three-part life now. I try and do some mediations. I love working at the hospital. And then particularly in the summer, I'm a body surfer. I'm a surf rat. I'm at the it. beach. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I hope to see you there. Okay. Well, thanks, Jeff, for stopping by and talking with us. I want to make sure and thank our listeners for tuning in. And if you've liked what you've heard today, please give us an Apple iTunes rating. We'll see you next time for another episode of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Consult a lawyer.